If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those run wild. Wow. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Holy shit. There are very few times I am actually truly shocked and terrified at the same time. But this video that I am about to show you truly es escapes words. I came across it on, um, it was a reaction that Joe Rogan was doing and I even went back to watch the original myself just to make sure I wasn't missing something that, you know, that this wasn't made up and it is authentic. This is a prophecy that came out in the 1950s. And I am, I think the guy's name is Paul Harvey, if, I, if I'm correct, but this is Joe Rogan reacting to it. Um, and so grab your popcorn. You're gonna wanna watch this whole thing because it is quite shocking and alarming. And if you don't believe in prophecy, well, this might turn your head and it, it is so accurate. I'm, I'm questioning a lot of things right now, but before we start watching it, make sure you guys are subscribed. People keep getting unsubscribed from my channel. I'm hearing from people every day. It really helps me out if you're subscribed and hit the notification bell as I continue to bring you more content, more of things that I think are important for people to see and hear. And in particular, this is one of them. And also with this one, you're going to want to share it with other people. Um, because it is really, it, it's alarming, the things that you're going to hear in here. So let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to see it. Paul Harvey, you know who that is? Sure. So he did a thing, God, back in the 60s or 70s, and he equated it to the devil. Um, and maybe it is. Or you could also say it's, it's, it's just that. But he did a radio piece on, on how to destroy America, the social fabric of it. Wow. A and, it's, and it's as though somebody just took... Uh, America, the, the social fabric of America from the late 60s to today and and the timeline of the things that he said. It's pretty wicked. It's pretty wow. powerful. <laughs> if you hear, play, play a little of that Yuri Bezmanov. I know we played it many times, but you need to hear it because it's so wild to watch him say it. You watch him say it in 1984 and well, back then. Well, you pull up the Paul Harvey thing from whenever that was about maybe the let's devil. Play that. Pull that up because we, I've, I haven't heard that and I've heard the Bezmanov thing. We played it like five times at least. It'll blow your mind when you hear this. It's um, it's not good, but it also gives us a chance to right the ship. It hasn't fucking hit the rocks yet. Like we can still come out of this. Paul Harvey. If I were the devil, is this the thing? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. The. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. Wow. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Wow. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Holy shit. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting <laughs> pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas 
a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. What year was that? It was 65, but... Holy shit. 1965. That's amazing. So, guys, I know it's 50 from the, in the 50s, or, but it's in 1965 that this prophecy was given. And this guy has other prophecies. Um, and But let's, fin let's finish what uh, Joe Rogan has to say. Amazing. 65... Wow. April third, nineteen sixty five, Paul Harvey wow. nailed it. Yeah. Wow. So you can you can use devil as a euphemism for anything that you want. Yeah. But the, but the result's the same. And we're seeing it we're we're seeing that you know, I think they said what somebody said that all these things are bad work ethic, all these things are racist, yeah. Or whatever. It's, a, it's mostly Yeah. Toxic masculinity. Uh, I've been <laughs> I've been accused of that. <laughs> Congratulations. You're on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fascinating one. Yeah. Defund the police. Toxic masculinity. Yeah, that worked that worked great. Yeah. They're all in the same sort of category yeah. of things. Like that seems silly. Seems silly to think that way. You need all of it. You need masculinity and femininity. It's okay. Just be whatever you are, but you <laughs> you, you fucking need it. Yeah. And if you want to tell those dudes that are playing football, that uh, they're they're toxic masculine. Who? What else are you gonna get? Who who's gonna play football other than like super aggressive alpha males? What are you talking about? But why is that's that not toxic? That's not toxic. No, it's just natural masculine behavior. Yeah, it's not toxic. What about toxic? It's all it's all stupid. That term as applied, it's like. But these are all terms that have been created. There's oh, it's fascinating that language is being reinvented before our eyes. Yeah, there's all these new words that are just meant to keep one person from disagreeing with another person's position. Mm -hmm. I love microaggressions. That's oh, that's a great one. Just like little bitty, oh, you weren't, that was a microaggression. Yeah, and you can call people. So they're just kind of explaining on what they thought about it. For me, I had a different takeaway with this. When he talked about, you know, almost everything you're saying, replacing Easter with the egg and even Christmas with, out with the bottle, and that's what it, it it actually has. They even have, la you know, ladles where they promote, you know, the the instead of the 12 days of Christmas, it'll be the 12 days of wine. The two, you know, it, it like things are become about celebrations, about parties and and all these other things and really moving away from what Christmas actually is, which was the birth of Christ. And you get to see even with the metal detectors in schools and the secularism that has been promoted, even being a patriot is seen as being wrong, but, you know, having, you know, countries divided within themselves and these gender identity politics that have really taken away from the fabric of unity within the country or building unity and community. Everyone's entrenched in their own camp, how churches and how, you know, things have been replaced with just psychology. You know, man, man doesn't need God. God doesn't exist. It was just, you know, crazy people believe in God or we, you know, we create it got there's just so many layers to this that i can unpack in this video and maybe i'll do a separate video where i actually kind of break down my deepest interpretation of this i just need to watch it some more digest it but i wanted to bring it to you guys because i thought it was just so relevant to what is happening today that a lot of the things that he said have come to pass and it is absolutely alarming to know that you know, that, that there, you know, it makes me wonder how many other things, the prophecies and things that I have not paid attention to that are coming to pass. And what does it actually mean? Um, this guy said that we, you know, we can still turn back the tide is not too late. I believe he said, and it's like, no, it is, it is too late. These, all of these things have come to pass. So we're past that point. So what is next? 
So anyway, guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. If you've seen this before, what's your interpretation of it? Um, and also again, make sure you subscribe and you hit that notification bell. You're not going to want to miss any of my videos and I will see you on the next one. Bye.